my son is, is reading, which is the coolest, but also deeply problematic because you, you can no longer say like, let's get D R U N K. Like you can no longer <laughs> spell out the things you spell out. Um, he's like, wait, what's drunk? You know, <laughs> I love that you posted this hilarious text message, uh, that you sent to Andy about, um, how, you know, the, 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 the list that he had to get and the coffee that he had to get for you. Is that how you would kind of sum up marriage after what almost 12 years, two kids? <laughs> A hundred percent. Yes. We are, we are quickly approaching our 13th year of marriage and it becomes very transactional where you're like, I've got the kids, you go buy the tampons, go get the diapers, go get the thing. You know, it's very, it's like, it's like you're making a game plan for like a football game, you know, and, and you're drawing the X's and the O's and someone's going to, you know, tackle this job and the other one's going to take care of this. So yes, it does become um, hilariously transactional, but I feel like when you have very little children, like we do, mm-hmm. efficiency is key. Yeah. And hopefully you can find a few laughs along the way, which that text really made both of us laugh. Oh, hard. definitely. It, it was so relatable. I totally can relate to every single moment about that. But like, do you, do you, do, do the two of you still have to like schedule time for each other and, you know, make those date nights or are you guys just exhausted by the end of the day? And you're like, I just want to pass out on the couch. Both, both. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, I think the smart thing would be to have like a regular working date night. A lot of our friends do that. We don't do that because our lives are so erratic that um, I do think it's easy to get uh, caught up in the management of life, home, children, all of it. Um, however, you know, we, we do set aside time. Like we, again, we have our anniversary coming up and we're sneaking away for one night to New York and reliving our first date and trying to, you know, have a little, a little selfish time together. So uh, we prioritize it, but I think we could all do a better job for sure. I love that. What was the first date like, if that's not too... Uh... No, we um, we went to UCB, Upright Citizens mm-hmm. Brigade, which um, is no longer, but we went to Improv, and then we went to this great Italian joint um, on the Upper East Side that Andy used to go to uh, as a player after late night matches at the Open. And so it was a really... He planned the date and was actually really smart, and I highly recommend it for anyone who's thinking about a first date going to an improv show because... Yeah. If your sense of humor doesn't align, at least you can find out in the first night. (laughs) Or if you're laughing at someone and someone isn't, or someone just doesn't have a sense of humor, I think it's really good to get those big, because that to me is kind of a big deal. It's really good to get those big things out of the way on date one. I love that. That's so great. I know the last time I think we spoke, you said that your kids weren't interested in sports or anything like that. Are they, is that still the case? And are they interested in acting at all? Oh, that's so funny. Um, Acting not yet, though. I feel like they can really give quite the performance right. every day, depending on the tantrum they feel like showing. So uh, I don't think they realize that's acting, but that's all I see it as. Um, interestingly, my son, I took him to his first uh, Hornets game in Charlotte and being in it, being like at, a, at an NBA game with, you know, dancers and music and the mascots. He was so excited that now we got him a basketball hoop. And for about three weeks, he spends three hours every day outside just shooting basketball hoops. He absolutely loves it. But this was a kid who had like no interest. He didn't he, like, didn't know what to do with a ball, you know, if you put it in his hands and now he's obsessed with basketball. I love that. That's so great. It's, it's so he loves great. it. Yeah. I mean, what other big milestones are they hitting? Uh, my son is, is reading, which is the coolest, but also deeply problematic because you you can no longer say like, let's get D-R-U-N-K. Like you can no longer <laughs> spell out the things you <laughs> spell out. Um, he's like, wait, what's drunk? You know, <laughs> so it's, it's, we're, we find that like our, our coded language is, mm-hmm. is no longer very coded. Um, but that's a huge milestone for a kindergartner. That is it's big. Oh, it's so exciting. Um, and our daughter is wild as ever. She joined a soccer league. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's now we're like sports parents. Now we're going to like games on Saturday and we're like screaming down the field. And he's coaching her soccer team. So uh, that's a recent development. that has been really fun. Yeah. Is he like super into it? Is he very competitive as a coach? No, really his goal is like all he says to all of us, he's like, please don't open up the snacks until after the game is over because once the snacks are out, they're all four. They're four years old. Like they want to eat crackers. They don't want to play soccer. So as long as we keep the snacks hidden until the end of the game, they're happy to play. Otherwise, they want to be on the bench eating goldfish crackers or whatever it is that they're eating. Oh, totally. And, you know, you know we've talked about this before, too. I know that last time you said you were kind of on the fence about maybe baby number three. Can you even imagine going through that whole newborn pregnancy phase again? This is cruel to say because I know you're still very much in it with a 10-month-old, but 
No, no, we, no, we all had uh, COVID in January and um, our friends, our kids got us all sick. And so our friends who had a child in our, in our daughter's class, they basically came and did camp COVID with us. Mm. And um, cause we were all positive and they had a little baby and like seeing the day to day with a little baby, mm. just like the following, the crawling, making sure like you always have a hand near their head so they don't hit their head. All the things that you're, you're constantly like bent over for six months. And I know you're in that phase now yeah, when no. you're in that phase, I, I just for, I forgot and mm-hmm. to have two kids who can like get themselves dressed and, you know, ask you for what they need. It, it, uh, it's not, we're at a good place now. It'd be hard. I, please. As, as soon as he came out, I'm like, we're done. That's it. Can't imagine doing it yeah. again. <laughs> good for you. Good. Yeah. Cause you're, you're in that, like you're in the phase where they're really explorative, but they're too, they're not sturdy enough to really do that independently. So yeah, you're just, you're basically playing bumper cars with your children right now. Springtime is here and that means allergy season and a lot of trouble for some people, but I know you have some relief during the season, right? Yeah. So I don't know about you, but this week specifically, I feel like my allergy symptoms have just exploded with the beautiful explosion of spring as well. Um, and so I've partnered with Zyrtec. Again, we've worked together before. It's a brand I've trusted and used for a long time. So I'm excited to work with them again to launch their Zyrtec Relief Project with American Forest, which is all about investing money in both research and planting trees uh, for historically excluded communities. So not only is Zyrtec trying to give us uh, relief from our allergy symptoms, but they are also trying to let us enjoy the outdoors by planting more trees in cities that really need it. I love that. And it's a great thing to tie into Earth Day because that's right around the corner too. So that's really nice. Yes. I know. And I'm sure it's you're dealing with uh, colds and sicknesses and allergies with your kids at home, right? All the things, all the things. We, um, it, It's funny, Our our my kids, one is in elementary school and one's in preschool and masks just came off. And the kids are thrilled, of course, to see their friends' faces. But after being somewhat shut down and or in masks for two years, you can imagine the kids start sharing all the viruses. So we're like, is this a virus or is this allergies? And that combined with... Again, the spring bloom has, yeah, a bunch of running noses going around. Yeah, definitely. But I'll take the spring allergies over the winter months any single day. Same, 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 same. I just want to get back to normal, whatever our new normal looks like.